with the success of this past season, um, you know, it's really truly been a dream season. And now getting a chance to be uh, on the cover of the game and getting a chance to be the part and associated with the uh, NHL 2003 is a huge honor, a thrill, and I think it's going to be a, a great uh, year for the game. Hi there. Welcome to Electronic Arts Canada, located just outside of Vancouver in beautiful British Columbia. We're about to take you on a behind the scenes tour of the EA Sports Studios and see how NHL 2003 gets made. First and foremost, I, I get to come to work and I get to have fun. I always say that this place is like a college campus. We're all huge hockey fans. We have a great group of guys and gals that work on this game year in, year out. Uh, I think we've got the best team in uh, EA Studios. The group that we have are so close-knit. Everyone's into hockey, but it's just, it's just the chemistry, whether they're artists, programmers, producers, marketing people, but ultimately everyone's here to make a great game. Definitely one of the best things about working on NHL is, is the teamwork. Close to 50 people working on, on the product directly. They're all very talented and they're all the best in their field. Video games are the happening thing. It's a growing business and it's, it's a very exciting industry to be in. It makes up for a lot of the long, hard hours that we put in actually making these things happen. The hours towards the end of a project are pretty intense. You're, you're working anywhere from nine in the morning till midnight, seven days a week. 20 or 30 hours straight sometimes and it just gets, gets pretty crazy. The worst I've worked is uh, about 48 hours straight trying to ship the game and uh, we're trying to track down the last buck. It took that long to do it. You know, at that time, everyone understands what it's about and you, you do, you want to final a great product. Everyone in the team is really, really committed to the, to the game and to delivering a quality product that will delight customers. It's just a really exciting environment to work in and to know that we're working on something that hundreds of thousands of people enjoy playing every year. It, it's fun to play on your own, but it's a lot more exciting to play against a human opponent. I, I don't think there's any game that is better for a good competitive head-to-head -head game. You know, when you play against a friend and you're scoring goals and knocking his players down and peeking around his players, I mean, it captures a lot of what the real game of hockey is about, which makes it exciting. The best job I could have would probably be playing in the NHL. This is the closest I'm going to get, so uh, this is a pretty good second. This has got to be the perfect job playing video games and playing hockey all in one. All right, we're done? Yep. Okay. Thanks, man. Yep. How motion capture gets in the game is the producer and I will sit down and put together a shoot list of what animations we want to capture this year. Then we'll find talent that we feel can uh, perform the moves that we want. Then we'll coordinate with the motion capture department and set up the cameras down at the ice rink. Uh, and then we'll capture the moves that we wanted to do. Once that's done, the motion capture department will process the data for us and uh, give it to us. Then we'll map all the moves onto our 3D skeleton. And then the animation is provided to the script animator or they'll be provided to the programmers so they can put them into the game. At any given time, there are about 800 main gameplay animations in NHL. Five players on each team, a goalie on each team, and every frame, each of those players needs to know what animation they should be playing what frame of the animation they should be playing, and what sort of motion either the user or the CPU expects of that player. Ready, speed, action! Good. <laughs> the whole process has been, uh, you know, very impressive. Uh, 
I, I enjoy playing and, and I can imagine what's behind the scenes, but actually coming out and seeing what effort goes into it and, and all the different staff that they have, it's very impressive what, what goes in behind the scenes. My specific job responsibility as the producer is quality control and design, pushing people, associate producers and other people on the team to do the best they can do and to try to take ideas or potentials and push them to their max so that we can do bigger things. There's constantly discussions with producers on what's a reasonable set of features they can get in into the game. We can take a close look at this, but uh, the schedule is very tight. The development director and, and the producer uh, in some ways are opposite in the spectrum. The way I think the development directors are measured is that the ability to deliver a game on time and on schedule. The way the producers are, are measured is what kind of features can get into the game. The guy in the half boards, the guy down low, the guy in the slot. Yeah, yeah. And the, yeah okay, that would be cool. Production process starts actually before we finish a uh, previous version of the game. We start with a long list of different ideas that we'd like to get into the game and we plan out what it's going to take to make those features happen and how can we make them as impactful as possible. It would be a good touch with the, just hearing the skates and the puck in the post. Once we decide on that, we go through a technical design phase where we assess the feasibility and the resources that are required to put these features in the game. How much work is it going to take? How much resources are we going to need? Whether it's pictures, photographs, audio sessions, stuff like that. The code is written, art is generated, and, and the come up with a playable game at the end. And that's broken up into like four different phases and milestones. So that throughout the year, we can measure at this point, one month in, these things will be done and we know where we're at. Basically review the game at each one of those milestones, assess how we are in terms of the schedule and the issues that come up. Those lead up to a time period we call alpha, which is basically all the features are in, but we have to do a lot of tuning and adjusting to it, as well as a lot of bug fixing and getting rid of the, the little errors and problems that appear in the game. And then you go through a phase where QA is testing it, really putting the game through its paces and the development team, and the, especially the software engineers are basically fixing bugs as fast as they can. And that goes through until it we call beta, and at beta we do our final test pass to make sure everything's good. Basically you have code lockdown, and at that point you're fixing really, really critical bugs. And after that you go into CQC. Um, CQC is EA's headquarters review of the game itself, and they go through a quick QA phase of it as well. At that point it goes to manufacturing, and from manufacturing onto the shelves and in the stores. And then we start again on the next year. The audio and speech process begins um, with script writers. So we send out all the parameters, what we need from them, and they return the scripts. It doesn't stop there, you have to go through an awful lot of reviews. So we've got up to about 10,000 lines, which is huge. Then once we're in the studio, the fun part starts. That's the play that's tied the score. Tied it up like a double bowline on a sheep shank. It can be tedious, there's no doubt about it. You have to say things over and over and over and over and over again. You get the idea. This is more, um, you know, scripted and more almost like acting. Despite fading a little, they grabbed the win by two. You nailed it there, Jim. I mean, you really have an eye for this game. John, that's kind of why I got this job. Makes sense. One of the interesting things that's happened with this game is in, in Canada, people know me as a real hockey broadcaster and say, oh, you also do that electronic arts game. Scores, top shelf. I run across people in America now that I work with and hear my voice and say, I didn't know you did the real thing. You're the guy from the video game. Jim, there was a performance that makes you say, wow. Definitely, Don. Well, wow. Thank you, Jim. As opposed to working with a very serious color commentator, it's fun to work with a guy who's got a sense of humor. And Jim, their final goal was just the chutney on the samosa. Here is Don Taylor. Hey, good evening, everyone. I'm Don Taylor. Welcome to Sports Set for Primetime. Well, a couple years ago, I guess some of the guys from EA saw me doing a half hour sports show and they asked me if I wanted to be part of this project. And I said, you're darn right. I'd love to. We're having a blast. Who bought? <laughs> Look at all the penalties these guys will be serving, Jim. Not exactly the way to win games, eh, Don? Ooh, you're right. You know, the audio is a very important part of the game. Um, you know, they are trying to capture what, what we feel as players. We hear fans yelling at us, we hear coaches, our other teammates, you know, yelling for the puck and fans yelling at us to shoot. So these are things that, um, that they're implementing in the game and trying to make it even more realistic and it helps to make a, a great game. One of the reasons that speech sounds so good in our game is because of the technology that we use called stitching, and that basically takes a bunch of different separate sound files, puts them together to create sentences, such as Burre passes to Flurry or Burre passes to Lindros. Uh, the way we get John, the PA announcer in the game, is uh, you know he comes over and reads scripts. Uh, it's a lot less challenging to get his source because we don't have to stitch what he says, but he's the guy that you hear 
Last minute of play in the second period. Last minute of play in the second period. Once Jim and Don have finished their recording session, we got all their data basically on hard drive. The amount of files that we're managing in speech for, for sports games is in the tens of thousands. So it's tedious work to edit all of them. Oh, I spilled hot coffee on my legs. Those are my legs. Oh yeah, sorry. So it's quite a bit of grueling work, but it's what you got to do to get it to sound great. Well, I'm impressed. My favorite things about the NHL series of games is just the fast-paced, furious gameplay. This year, the manual deke is just going to be blown out. The exciting new addition to it is the, the game breaker. We have made the goaltenders a heck of a lot better. The big changes that we've made for 2003 over 2002 is we've spent a lot of time and concentration on gameplay. We've now allowed the users to physically feel like they're controlling the puck on the stick. And you can physically move the stick back and forth and it feels like you have more control over the player now. Deking is when you, you move the stick left and right and make moves on your opponent. And by doing this you'll build up points and you fill up your, your deking meter. And when this happens, you can trigger this moment that slows down time. It's like being in the zone and you get to see the play develop in front of you and you get to capitalize on that. When we play hockey, you do, you break away and if you're on a, on a break and, you, and it's you and the goalie, it does seem like time stops. He scores! It's, it seems that you, know, you, you bear down and you don't hear anything else and this is a feature they're putting in the game. You can choose to go top corner, five hole, and you can see this up close. They have a lot of different deeks and this is something that makes it even more real, you know, as close as you can, what we see when we go in on a break. It'll be a, a great addition to the game this year. I work on the artificial intelligence. Uh, it's everything that has to do with making the players play like real hockey player. Acer does a lot of unexpected things, so we really just have to figure out how we can make the AI play around the user. Well, the way we decide how goals go in our game is we sort of evaluate from, from both angles. We look at the shooter and his abilities and what sort of hockey situation is he in. If he's in a good scoring situation or if he's taking a poor shot. And then we look at the attributes of the goalie and how well prepared the goalie is for the shot. So we try and capture a lot of the essence of a real shooter-goalie duel in hockey. Some of the key uh, improvements to the goalie this year is we try to expand the number of poses so the goalie goes into a variety of styles of butterfly. See a lot more spectacular saves, desperation saves, goalies diving, rolling, spinning. That'll add a lot to the excitement of the game and should make it a lot more like the, the real NHL kind of part. Gamers are going to love it.